Number 10. Eating a Gecko David Dowell was known as a lovable hooligan. The 34-year-old was a wonderful father to three children, and he never backed down from a dare. However, at a Christmas party with family and friends, David's daring attitude would be the death of him. A friend dared David to do something extremely bizarre, eat a gecko. Yeah, a living gecko lizard like the Geico commercial gecko, and so he did. It's not exactly clear what the terms of the dare were, whether or not he had to eat the gecko whole or what. Maybe he got to cook it. But what David did not expect was to be rushed to his local hospital just two days after eating the gecko. He had incredibly intense pain throughout his entire body. At first, David just thought he was getting sick or was possibly a bit hungover. But after being brought to the hospital, he suffered in agony there for 10 whole days before finally dying. It was one of the worst ways to die, with doctors saying that his testicles had swollen to the size of grapefruits and he had fluid leaking out of them. And this all happened because of an accumulation of fluids built up inside his stomach cavity. And then he went into surgery, but died on the table, basically from internal rotting. There was never an official cause of death, and it's unclear how exactly he died, though he was diagnosed with salmonella poisoning. Number 9. Playground Dare Backfire In Germany, a man was hanging out at a playground in Bavaria with a couple of his friends. The friends decided it would be a funny idea if somebody taped themselves to the spinning roundabout. They dared him to do it, and he did. And it turned out it was not a good idea. The unnamed man let his peers tie him to the roundabout with adhesive tape and then tie the roundabout to their car. They sped off quickly, spinning the carousel at a dangerously high speed. But here's where everything seriously backfired for this childish dare. The tape holding the guy to the roundabout came undone and he was flung through the air, where he smashed his head open and died at the scene. Just imagine that for a second. You and your friends come up with some really stupid ideas sometimes, but to actually go through with one, and then the result kills one of you. These guys had just been messing around, and then one of them was dead and the police were treating it as involuntary manslaughter. According to the Bavarian police, the three friends had to be taken to the hospital because they were in shock about what had happened. And while they probably won't spend any time in jail for what they did to the poor guy, seeing as it was voluntary on a dare, they'll no doubt have to live with that horrifying memory for the rest of their lives. Number 8. Boiling Water An 8-year-old girl has died after being dared to drink boiling water. And she wasn't dared personally. It actually happened after watching somebody else do it on a YouTube dare video. Oh man, the dangers of the internet. The dare was to drink boiling water out of a straw, so the little girl did it. But within minutes, she was having difficulty breathing and fell unconscious and needed to be rushed to the hospital. Kiari Pope suffered burns to her mouth and throat and this led to issues breathing. She had to go immediately into emergency surgery to get a tracheotomy. And this left her with chronic respiratory problems. She couldn't even talk. And even though she seemed to be getting better after a while, she later had difficulty breathing, became unresponsive, and died after paramedics spent 40 minutes trying to resuscitate her. Basically, the scalding hot water seared the child's throat, which caused an unending string of problems eventually leading to her being unable to breathe. And all because of an online dare video. This is one of the reasons parents should monitor what their kids are doing online. Number 7. A Live Drowning In Mississippi, a man drowned, and he drowned in the absolutely worst way possible. It was in a pond, and it was being filmed on Facebook Live and all for a dare. The guy's friends bullied him and said that there was no way he could swim all the way across the pond. They dared him to do it, and said that if he could get to the other side, they'd give him cash for a down payment on a new vehicle. But he was nervous even before jumping into the pond and could be heard saying in the video, but if I drown, who's going to come in and get me? As it turned out, nobody went in to get him. He got halfway across the pond and could be heard screaming for help and flailing in the water. One of his friends phoned 911, but nobody actually jumped in to save him. What good friends they were. The so-called friends waited until emergency services got there, and they eventually pulled the limp and cold corpse out of the water. In the end, 20-year-old J.W. Ransom died, and he didn't get that down payment on his car either. And his friends were right. He couldn't swim all the way across the pond after all. So are you a daredevil? Would you let your friends talk you into doing a stupid stunt like one of these? Have you ever had them talk you into something before? Let me know in the comments below. And if you're liking this video, be sure to hit that like button and then hit that subscribe button too. Number 6. Off the Bridge A video blogger and art student named Shah Faisal Shinwari is extremely lucky after narrowly surviving one of the craziest dares ever. Somebody actually dared him to jump off Tower Bridge in London and he agreed to do it. The bridge is approximately 213 feet high above the River Thames, and no, people are not supposed to be jumping off it. Part of the reasoning behind the dare was to help the vlogger get over his fear of heights. 
At 17 years old, the vlogger thought it might be a fine idea. Though I'm sure we probably could have come up with a few other, less deadly ideas with a bit of time. But he decided to go through with it anyways, and he climbed onto the tower bridge. His cameraman started to egg him on. And just a few seconds later, he jumped directly into the water. But the river was a bit stronger than he anticipated. He was sent spiraling downstream, with his mouth filling with water and his arms flapping like some kind of crazy person. Shinwari eventually washed up on the side of the river and was rescued by paramedics, but he almost didn't survive. He swallowed a lot of dirty water, risked drowning internally, and was in danger of getting an infection. But he did live to tell the tale. But he almost didn't, and I wonder if he still has a fear of heights. Number 5. Hammer Stuck in the Mouth A teenage girl got into a bit of trouble after getting a hammer stuck inside of her mouth. Kaylee had previously been talking about her favorite Korean boy band, BTS. According to the New York Post, she described one of them as being so beautiful I could shove a hammer in my mouth. Kaylee from Louisiana was 14 when her friend dared her to stick an entire hammer's head inside of her mouth. And if you've ever seen a hammer, this probably doesn't seem like something that's physically possible. It's no wonder she got the hammer stuck and then couldn't seem to remove it from inside of her face. She seemed to be quite amused by it though and even took a picture and captioned it with, how do you tell your mom you got a hammer stuck in your mouth? It took 10 minutes of struggling for Kaylee to get the hammer out, and it wasn't a pleasant sensation. But the silliest part is that after Kaylee got the hammer out of her mouth, she put it back in several times later to show off her new skill to her friends. Her mother has since said she'll be hiding the toolbox, probably to keep Kaylee from sticking any other dirty tools in her mouth. Number 4. Salt and Ice the Salt and Ice Challenge is one of the most absurd dares currently floating around on the internet. And here's how it works. You put some salt on your bare skin, then ice cubes over the salt. Then apply pressure and experience an immediate explosion of horrible pain. The dare has become something of an epidemic with people all over the country being burnt because they want to see how it works. And guess what? It works. You don't have to try it after watching this video. In fact, I beg you not to. According to the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, one of these burn victims was a 12-year-old boy who participated in the dare after learning about it online. He burned himself so terribly with the salt and ice that he had to be treated at the West Penn Burn Center. Oh, ouch. Normally, the burns are fairly mild, usually first degree, and only taking a few days to heal. But in this case, the youth took a bit more pain than anticipated and had severe blistering all over his skin and had to apply a special lotion four times a day for months and wasn't allowed to go outside without a shirt on for the rest of the summer. According to his mom, he let himself be burned for 20 minutes straight. The injury is similar to frostbite that can result in mild cold injury, but it also could increase in severity based on the time the ice is applied. The longer, the more serious the injury. This patient went for a few minutes, but there have been cases that went on for six or seven minutes that resulted in third degree burns, said Dr. Abelay. So let's not try this at home, okay kids? Number three, paralyzed by a slug. An Australian teenager named Sam Ballard was dared to eat a slug, and it seemed like a perfectly innocent, however kind of disgusting prank. So he put the slimy creature into his mouth and swallowed it. But what Sam didn't know was that the slug had a deadly worm inside of it that would put him in a coma for over a year, paralyze his entire body, and eventually cause him to die. This was huge news and an awful tragedy in Australia back in 2010. Sam was only 19 and was drinking with a few of his friends when the slug crawled across the patio in front of them. It was a total spur-of-the-moment thing and caused Sam, who had been a rugby player at the time, to have the worst year of his life and then die. As for how the slug killed him, it was the parasitic worm inside of the slimy critter that gave Sam rat lungworm disease. The disease can actually be caught from eating freshwater crab, shrimp, frogs, or anything else that carries this parasitic worm. Just a silly dare among friends can always take a turn for the worse. Number 2. Dare The Dare program was a fun idea to make kids aware of drugs and to stop them from using them. Do you remember this from your school days? The basic idea behind Dare was that drugs are bad and you should stay far away from them. But not everyone took those lessons to heart. A man from Missouri named Tanner Hutchinson was one of these people. He was recently arrested following an automobile accident in Columbia. Hutchison was arrested on a felony narcotics charge while wearing a Dare t-shirt in possession of controlled substances. The crash had actually been caused by a driver who was impaired, and Hutchison himself already had a rap sheet complete with drug possession, theft, and even burglary. Maybe he thought it was funny to wear the Dare shirt, or maybe he thought it was a little ironic. Whatever the case, he was sentenced to spend five years in prison, with the sentence later being reduced to five years of probation. When he was booked into the Boone County Jail, he had his Dare shirt confiscated. 
Tanner, sir, you are not fit to wear that shirt. Number one, live grenade gone wrong. In China, a soldier just messing around with a grenade nearly lost his life. First of all, there really is no just messing around with a grenade. It's kind of just a terrible idea always. The soldier was part of the 26th Army Artillery Unit in China. It's not clear exactly what happened, whether he thought it would be a smart idea to fool around with the grenade or if maybe one of his fellow soldiers dared him to try and juggle the thing, but whatever the case, the pin got pulled and the live grenade fell right at his feet. There were only seconds for the soldier to get away before the grenade exploded, leaving a black cloud behind in its wake. If it hadn't been for his training partner who thought quickly and grabbed the man and threw him to safety, he would have exploded into dozens of little pieces. When it comes to dares and fooling around, grenades should absolutely never be used. If you ever want to try juggling something, maybe try apples. 34-year-old David Wall was an experienced thrill-seeking enthusiast. For years, he's been doing all kinds of extreme sports like skydiving, car racing, snowboarding. He was also super into motorcycles. The Utah native had been living in Europe for the last couple years, but in September of 2020, his high-octane life would get the better of him. He was in the Cherfurston mountain range in Switzerland on a wingsuiting adventure. Yeah, but we probably need to clear up what exactly is a wingsuit. The typical wingsuit design has webbed wing surfaces between the arms and legs. The force of the opposing air inflates those webs by pushing air through inlets in the suit, supporting and keeping the airfoil semi-rigid throughout the flight or jump. Essentially, you're supposed to be able to glide through the air just like a bird. Wall jumped from the highest spot within a cluster of peaks at an elevation of 7,566 feet. This is an insanely high spot even for an extreme sport like this. He crashed into the side of a mountain and he never got back up. Number 9. Deadly Accident in Brazil Another recent wingsuit failure happened in Brazil in 2021. A Moroccan-American man traveled to the mountain of Pedra de Gavia near Rio de Janeiro to fly just like a bird. He set off to climb to the top of the great mountain to spread his wings. He took the leap, and nobody ever saw where he landed. Authorities had to be called in to search for the guy's body. He was found two hours later. Not much was left of him, as most of him was splattered. And it's not clear exactly what went wrong with his flight, though initial reports suggested his parachute simply didn't open. Nobody actually saw him crash, as this guy was more of a lone wolf when it came to extreme sports, which by the way, it's really not a great idea. He was definitely dead upon arrival. The 42-year-old was a resident of North Carolina, and it worked at the American Bank for over 20 years. He will be sadly missed. Wingsuits are no joke, and one wrong move can spell disaster. Statistics show that 72% of wingsuit jumpers have witnessed serious injury or death of other participants in the sport, and 43% of them have suffered a significant injury from a base jump, and 76 had experienced at least one near-miss incident where a serious injury or fatality was avoided through sheer luck. Number 8. Jet-Powered Fail A man from France named Vincent Raffet got into a bit of an accident with a jet-powered wingsuit though actually the device was less of a wingsuit and kind of more of a jetpack, and the accident was less of an accident and more of a death. The tragic incident happened in Dubai during a training exercise. You see, Vince was a professional jetpack pilot, a trained athlete, and he was already famous online for posting viral videos of his amazing jetpack stunts. Vince was also the first jetpack pilot to attempt high-altitude flight using a jet-powered wingsuit like a super primitive version of Iron Man's suit. Even though other pilots had jumped from helicopters wearing jetpacks, Vince was the first to launch from the ground and soar upwards into the atmosphere. But what went wrong this time? The suit is powered by four miniature jet engines. The controls allow a pilot to move in any direction they want to maneuver and to perform rolls and loops and the suit has a maximum altitude of 20,000 feet. The maximum duration is 13 minutes, and the top speed is 253 miles per hour. Vince should have been totally fine, but unfortunately, he didn't use his emergency parachute while descending and plummeted to his death. Number 7. Death of a Champ Dr. Angelo Grabisic from Willenhall in the UK recently perished while flying a wingsuit in Saudi Arabia. The tragic incident has been described as a misadventure by local news. Grabisic was a talented astronautical engineer and the leader of a wingsuit design team at the University of Southampton. He was known for working on propulsion systems for spacecraft. He had helped initiate the Icarus Project, a plot to design better, safer, and faster wingsuits. 
and he was a kind and honest person loved by his students, his family, and his friends. But unfortunately, something went horribly wrong with his final flight. At first, everything seemed to be going fine. He jumped out of the helicopter and was gliding through the air perfectly. But then something happened. He was flying too low. He misjudged the height of a ridge, and he crashed. He then tumbled the rest of the way to the ground, suffering such severe injuries that by the time paramedics got to him, it was too late. So what do you think so far? Would you ever want to try wingsuit flying? I don't think I would, but you let me know in the comments below. And if you're liking this video, then be sure to hit that thumbs up and the subscribe buttons if you haven't already. And now, more wingsuit disasters. Number 6. A Deadly Competition As if wingsuits weren't dangerous enough on their own, there are actually wingsuit diving competitions in which people race wearing these crazy suits. You have to be a little mad to get into this sport. And according to Newsweek, a veteran skydiver was recently competing in one of these insane races when he tragically crashed and died. His name was Dmitry Dedenko, and he was competing in the Wingsuit Diving Championships in Western Australia. Dmitry jumped out of an aircraft and lost the race almost immediately. His parachute never deployed, and he literally tumbled all the way to the ground and died on impact. Well, he may have been alive for a few seconds or minutes, but he was definitely dead by the time they scraped his body off the ground. And it was all because of a failed parachute. According to WA Today, about 20 people, including friends, witnessed Dedenko's jump go awry while skydivers on the ground tried desperately to save him. Tributes poured in like rain for the adrenaline junkie as friends and fellow skydivers remembered Dedenko as an amazing friend and soulful adventurer. A fellow skydiver, M.G. Franco, wrote over Instagram, Fly high, we'll miss your amazing madness. This really proves how horrifyingly dangerous wingsuits are, and just how risky this all is. You have to have nerves of steel to do stuff like this. And Dimitri had gone over 6,000 jumps all around the world throughout his thrill-seeking life. He was a legendary skydiver, but it was strapping into a wingsuit that finally ended his career and killed him. He was only 30 years old and still had a long life to live, but then again, when you live dangerously close to the edge, sometimes you slip. Or in this case, when you jump off of something or out of something really high, trying to fly like you were born with wings, the landing might not go so well. Number 5. The Desperate Warning Some of the extra risks that come with wingsuiting are flat spins, aka uncontrollable spinning. Burble, meaning a vortex in the parachute deployment area. Tail strikes, meaning hitting an aircraft's tail on exit. And twists, meaning a spinning parachute. The need to control a suit during a malfunction, such as having to depressurize inflated wings prior to opening a parachute, can result in the most serious of injuries and death. And sometimes the parachute just doesn't open. Statistics say that one in a thousand parachutes will fail to open. A tourist from Beijing was missing for seven days before her body was finally discovered. Deep in the forests of Tianmen Mountain National Park, after a horrifying wingsuit accident that went horribly, horribly wrong, the unidentified victim and a cameraman jumped from over 8,000 feet above the scenic area in central China. But there were problems almost immediately. The woman strayed from the proper route and rapidly descended towards the trees. The cameraman tried desperately to warn her. He waved and screamed, but she simply never took notice. She was deviating significantly from the agreed flight path, and then she was gone. She vanished from sight and fell into the trees, and it's believed that her parachute never opened. This means she fell 8,000 feet and never slowed down for a second until she smacked into the ground. The reason her body was so difficult to find is because the area in which she fell was vast, dark, and almost completely inaccessible. Search teams, helicopters, drones scoured the area for seven days before they finally found the poor traveler. Suffice it to say, she was in pretty dire condition when they finally discovered her broken, doll-like body. Number 4. Into the Power Lines A Russian man in a wingsuit leapt off an Italian cliff and landed in some power lines. Talk about a shocking turn of events. The guy died in what has been described as a horrific accident after being electrocuted to death. The incident happened in Chimacapi, a popular destination with tourists that overlooks Lake Garda. The Russian's wingsuit was stranded inflatable fabric with specialized arms and legs that provide lift. But the lift provided by his suit took him directly into a mess of power lines, at which point he was delivered a fatal dose of electricity. According to a local police officer, he had probably misjudged where he was jumping from, and that's what cost him his life. The same officer also said he was electrocuted instantaneously when he hit the power lines. 
Wingsuit accidents had become so commonplace in Italy that the local rescuers charged with retrieving the dead bodies actually went on protest to try and stop the sport from taking place. Nevertheless, people are still jumping. And this is despite around 74 confirmed deaths involving wingsuits in just the last three years. So what do you think? Should this sport be banned? Or are you more of the opinion that it's their life and if they want to take that leap of faith, then let them? Number 3. The Last Jump Extreme athlete Dean Potter has died in a tragic wingsuit accident. This guy was famous for his crazy cliff climbs and his horrifying death-defying extreme jumps. He was one of two men killed after leaping from 7,500 feet in Yosemite National Park. Dean and his jumping partner went missing shortly after going up the mountain. Park rangers searched for them overnight, but to no avail. It wasn't until the next morning that a helicopter crew spotted both their bodies deep in Yosemite Valley. The men were still wearing their wingsuits, but it didn't appear as if their parachutes had deployed. As you can probably tell by now if you've watched this entire video, parachutes not deploying seems to be the main cause of death in wingsuit accidents. It's almost like these things need a complete redesign, because the parachutes simply don't deploy when they're supposed to. The athlete knew the risks every time he decided to fly off a cliff with a parachute. He even lost a friend just a year before to a base jumping accident and spoke at that friend's memorial service. A fellow climber, Chris McNamara, said he always recognized how dangerous the sport was and at the same time, how magical it was. The tension between those two things. But here's why Dean Potter and his partner had gone jumping solo without telling anyone. It's actually illegal to do this in national parks, and so the guys probably went at dusk or even during the night so they didn't get caught. Well, this was the last jump they ever attempted, as they both plummeted to the bottom of the valley and came face to face with death. Number 2. Saved by Trees Base jumper Eric Dos Santos from San Diego was left broken after a terrifying wingsuit accident that was all caught on his helmet camera. He was flying in his wingsuit at 90 miles per hour in France when he misjudged where the top of the trees were. He didn't pull up enough and he ended up clipping the top of a tree, and the mistake sent him spinning down to the forest floor, where he smacked the ground extremely hard and blacked out. Eric woke up in a hospital sometime later and found out he had spent three hours laying crippled on the forest floor until trail workers eventually found him. This is one of those rare cases where base jumping gone wrong didn't actually result in a death. The incident left him with several broken bones, but he walked away with his life. He fractured his scapula, his clavicle, three left ribs, and he suffered head trauma and deep lacerations, but in all seriousness, he should have died, and it's actually beyond super lucky he's still alive. Number 1. Faceplant into a Mountain Jeb Corliss has been base jumping for around 20 years. He also had an extensive career using wingsuits. In 2012, Jeb jumped from the Table Mountain in South Africa, an altitude of 3,558 feet. He flew downwards at 120 miles per hour. And during the flight, his foot touched a boulder and sent him crashing into the side of the mountain. But he was miraculously able to pull his parachute even after doing a faceplant. And it was thanks to his parachute that he had a much gentler time falling down to the bottom of the mountain, where he was found alive but in very dire condition. He had two broken legs and a torn ACL and needed reconstructive surgeries. He spent over a year in hospital in South Africa. Despite this horrible episode of wingsuit diving gone wrong, Jeb got right back on the horse after being discharged from the hospital and jumped on live television in 2013 in China, sailing through a dangerous V-shaped slot about 15 feet wide. It was a daredevil move, but he did it anyways, and he survived. A young pastor in North Carolina named Matthew James Phelps is spending the rest of his life in prison after taking some cold medicine. It made him really, really sleepy and apparently made him go crazy. And what has now been dubbed the cold medicine murder, Phelps called 911 early in the morning and told the operator that he had taken way too much cold medicine because it made him feel good. He said, I had a dream. And then I turned on the lights and she's dead on the floor. He told the 911 dispatcher, I have blood all over me and there's bloody knife on the bed and I think I did it. You know, because he was sleeping. He then blamed his guzzling of the cold medication on his dead wife who he had stabbed 123 times. He also told the 911 dispatcher that he had a dream and when he woke up, his wife was dead on the floor and her blood was all over him. But this turned out to be something very strange. It turned out that Phelps was obsessed with the cult classic film American Psycho and even had pictures on his Instagram account of him dressed like the main character. People who know Phelps claimed that he had a real interest in finding out what it would be like to kill someone. 
So a pastor obsessed with death? What's going on? Apparently, Phelps got his wish when he stabbed his wife to death, just like Patrick Bateman did in the movie with a few different women. After the toxicology report, it became clear that there were not toxic levels of cold medication in his system and that he was lying. He couldn't really kill her in his sleep, and cold medication just makes you sleepy, but it doesn't make you want to kill anyone. Nobody knows exactly what happened between Phelps and his wife before he killed her, but he definitely did it. He's pled guilty to the murder, claiming that he feels like a monster and that it was drinking, drugs, and carelessness, not really sleepwalking, that led to the murder. That's not possible, right? Well, just wait, because I've got more stories for you. Number 10. Stranger Danger In perhaps one of the strangest sleepwalking incidents ever, a woman was discovered slipping out of bed at night, completely asleep, and having sex with strangers. According to the medical story published in New Scientist, sleep medicine experts were able to successfully treat the rare case of this sleepwalker, though not until after it had seriously disrupted the lives of both the woman and her romantic partner. This woman was middle-aged and living in Australia when she began wandering out of the house at night seeking out random partners to get naked with. Of course, this woman could not be identified for confidential reasons, but the case is 100% real. Her lewd behavior went on for months and months before she even found out. And throughout the entire experience, she had no memory of what she did while she was asleep. The crazy part is that her partner didn't figure out what was going on until one day he awoke to find her missing went out searching for her and caught her red-handed in the middle of the act. According to Peter Buchanan, the sleep physician on the case, there were a few different factors that convinced him that the woman was truly sleepwalking. The couple were both distressed, the woman clearly didn't remember what happened, and during an in-depth evaluation in a clinic, she was found to raise in the middle of the night and wander around completely asleep. Luckily, this woman ended up being cured. However, there is no information on whether her relationship survived or not. What do you think happened? Number 9. The TikTok Sleepwalker What better place to reveal your bizarre sleepwalking habits than on TikTok? In a recent viral series, one user uploaded videos of herself sleepwalking and gained a brief bit of international fame. It all started when the TikTok user told her followers that she had a sleepwalking disorder. Thinking it would be funny, her boyfriend actually installed a series of security cameras inside of their house so they could easily both watch the footage back in the morning. It turned out that she really did have a sleepwalking problem. And after doing some heavy editing, she posted a series of videos in which she was doing some pretty absurd things throughout all hours of the night. This woman's name is Selena Myers, a Canadian who has a bit of trouble falling asleep at night and then staying in bed. In the videos she uploaded, Selena can be seen wandering through her home in the darkest hours of the night, setting up the dinner table for invisible guests, putting wigs on her plants, and even walking outside to toss random cans of soda into her yard to feed it. The videos are completely ridiculous, and it really goes to show the absurdity of what people really do when they sleepwalk. But here's where things get crazy. Selena's boyfriend started setting up props at night to see if she would interact with them. On one occasion, he set up a mannequin in the living room, and sure enough, Selena approached the mannequin in the middle of the night, spoke to it in gibberish, yelled at it in an English accent, and let her hand hover above its bald head for a good while with a look of pure amazement on her face. And according to Selena, the reason for her strange antics at night are likely because she often dreams about hosting a pool party. Number 8. The Sleepwalking Killer Scott Falader claims he was sleepwalking when he murdered his wife. This is undoubtedly one of the most brutal cases of sleepwalking in human history. In the year 2000, Scott was convicted of first-degree murder and sentenced to life in prison. And even all these years later, Scott still claims that he doesn't remember a single thing about the night that he killed his wife. His defense has always been that he killed her accidentally in his sleep, which throughout the course of the trial earned him the name of the sleepwalking killer. According to ABC News, Scott never once denied that he killed his wife. He has long since accepted what he's done, and yet he has claimed that he'll never forgive himself even though it had been a total accident and he had not intended to kill anyone. All Scott had really wanted to do was get a good night of sleep. And if you take a look at the case, Scott really doesn't seem like the kind of fellow who would murder his wife. The couple had been married since high school. They were both part of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and everyone who knew them was quite aware that Scott loved his wife more than anything. Even their son told the authorities that he had never once in all of his childhood seen his parents argue or fight. And yet here's the brutal truth. 
On January 17th of 1997, Scott dragged his wife into their backyard pool and held her head under the water until she died. Sleepwalking or not, Scott definitely killed his wife. So what do you think happened? Have you seen a Dateline episode or maybe a 2020 on this? Let me know in the comments below and then be sure to subscribe if you're new to the channel. Number 7. The Pig Out The woman in our next story has the unusual problem of waking up in the middle of the night and then eating. For years, she experienced uncontrollable sleep eating. For about a decade, the 51-year-old kept her problem mainly to herself. The sleep eating started around the time she got divorced. She developed extreme difficulty falling asleep, and she would wake up frequently. But much to her dismay, she began to wake up in the morning to find evidence that she had raided her refrigerator, brought food and snacks to her bed, and then ate everything she could before falling back into a deep sleep. During one particularly weird episode, she ate an entire bottle of ketchup. And of course, like most sleepwalkers, this woman could not remember anything the next day. Sometimes the woman even made raw cookie dough by mixing all the ingredients together and then eating it. And while the woman never did anything violent, her nightly activities obviously disturbed her a great deal. She even ended up gaining about 20 pounds because of her sleep eating. After visiting a sleep clinic, it was discovered that the woman had sleep apnea as well. She was provided information about how to deal with her sleepwalking, but other than that, there was not much she could do to stop herself. Number 6. Climbing a Crane A very strange rescue operation recently needed to be held for a sleepwalker who had managed to scale 130 feet to the top of a construction crane at 2 o'clock in the morning. This happened in the United Kingdom, when a passerby noticed a body laying on the counterweight of the crane while out for a midnight stroll. The police were called, the firemen showed up at the site, and a rescue operation worker crawled to the top of the crane and discovered a young girl fast asleep and completely unaware of the frightening predicament she was in. The firemen then sat with the snoozing girl while trying to figure out what to do next. The big issue here was that the firemen didn't want to wake the girl up in case she panicked and then fell 130 feet to her death. The firemen ended up securing the girl in position, while a specialist fire rescue team used a hydraulic ladder to reach the girl's location and safely bring her down to the ground. Afterwards, nobody had any idea how she'd even climbed up the crane in the first place. However, Dr. Irshad Ibrahim from the London Sleep Center was not at all surprised by her story. According to the doctor, a person is able to do anything while asleep that they can do while they're awake. Plus, they're lacking the fear factor when they're sleeping, meaning they'll do literally anything, including climbing up a crane. Number 5. The Eight-Story Window Randy Fothisain is perhaps one of the unluckiest sleepwalkers in the world. This guy was sleepwalking early on a Sunday morning when he fell out of an eight-story window in New York and almost died. Randy fell six stories and then crashed into a layer of scaffolding. At the time, he'd been wearing nothing but his underwear. Of course, Randy then had to quickly be taken to the nearest hospital, where he was treated for a broken leg, a broken rib, and serious injuries to his back and abdomen. And here's where things get really strange. According to the report from the Daily Mail, Randy's girlfriend had given him some of her sleeping pills before going to bed the previous night. It had also been reported that Randy had problems sleepwalking as a child. And in a recent study from the Stanford University School of Medicine, it was revealed that only around 4% of Americans are prone to being sleepwalkers. And only about a third of that number will actually experience sleepwalking during their lives. But the study also says that people who indulge in sleeping pills are far more likely to experience an episode of sleepwalking. In the case of Randy, his past history combined with the use of his girlfriend's sleeping medication resulted in him walking straight out of a window while asleep and nearly plummeting to his death. Number 4. Getting Ready for Work In a significantly less exhilarating story, a chronic sleepwalker named Mel Odd spends her nights making cups of tea for herself serving clients and getting ready for work repeatedly. This girl was only 23 years old when her story was revealed to the world. She has extremely lucid dreams at night, in which she claims that she's neither awake or asleep. She spends her sleeping hours in this bizarre purgatory between wakefulness and sleep. And even if she goes to bed early in the evening, say around 8 p.m., she still only gets about three hours of deep sleep a night. This has left her in a permanent state of exhaustion that must feel a little like purgatory itself. Perhaps the strangest thing Mel does at night is make drinks. She can make up to 50 drinks in a single night. Plus, she wakes up fully dressed, prepped, and ready to go to work. She claims the dreams are about talking to her customers, getting stuff ready around the office, 
and taking orders from other people. Considering that she works as a runner at a TV company, her job literally revolves around tea and coffee, and this has seeped into her dreams. Mostly, Mel's sleepwalking has proved harmless, that is, except for one night when she accidentally tumbled down the stairs because she thought people from work were coming to her house to get her for a bike ride. While she is still alive right now, we can only hope Mel fixes her sleepwalking before she does something truly crazy. Number 3. The Sleepwalking Chef Robert Wood is a former chef who experienced some very strange behavior while sleeping. At 55 years old, Robert was forced to seek medical help for sleepwalking. As it turned out, he'd been making spaghetti, stir-fry, and all kinds of other dishes in the middle of the night while fully asleep. Apparently, this was happening between four and five times in a single night, with Robert rising from bed, stumbling into his kitchen, and then trying to prepare a meal. His wife was the one who grew the most concerned by his culinary exploits, after she witnessed her husband setting the table, making cereal, and even trying to craft an omelet. Because of Robert's strange behavior, the couple was only getting a few hours of sleep at night. But wait, it goes back further in time. Robert's first experiences with sleepwalking were when he was only 14 years old. He went through most of his life completely fine, but then suddenly in his 50s, the sleepwalking came back. Robert sought out specialists at the Edinburgh Sleep Clinic, and they figured that Robert was probably suffering because he had breathing problems that made his sleep unbearable. And that ultimately caused him to sleepwalk. Number 2. Sleep Driver there's nothing quite as dangerous as driving while asleep. Sleep driving is arguably far more perilous than sleep walking, especially since you can not only kill yourself, but you can hit another car or run over an unsuspecting civilian and kill them too. This next story is about a woman named Jackie, who had moved to the United Kingdom from Canada and was shocked to find out that she'd been taking her motorcycle out for joy rides while asleep at night. It was her landlady who first brought it to her attention, as she witnessed Jackie leaving the apartment in the middle of the night, strapping on her helmet and driving off. She also said that Jackie typically returned just under 20 minutes later. During those 20 minutes out on the road, Jackie had been completely asleep. But Jackie's story goes way back. As a child, nobody ever wanted to have sleepovers at her house because she made weird sounds in her sleep. Jackie would growl so loudly that the other children would become frightened. She would also get up in the middle of the night and wander around on her own. Basically, Jackie had been sleepwalking for her entire life. But her motorcycle escapades, well, that was something new. And being smart about it, Jackie began giving her keys to her landlady at night so she couldn't drive off while snoozing. That's a really good idea, Jackie. Number 1. Sleepwalking Murder A man named Ken Parks committed murder in 1987 while asleep. The case became such a huge controversy that it went all the way up to the highest Supreme Court in Canada. But unlike the story from earlier about the guy who killed his wife, Ken Parks was acquitted of the murder because he claimed to have been asleep when it happened. In his sleep, Ken managed to murder his mother-in-law and almost kill his father-in-law. Ken then turned himself into the authorities because he knew he had committed the crime. But to be quite honest, this case is way less convincing than the other one. Ken drove a significant distance through the city at night to his wife's parents' house in a different district and then opened their front door with the key they'd given him. Ken then used a tire iron to beat his mother-in-law to death. He then turned on his father-in-law and tried to strangle him, but he managed to survive the attack. If you ask me, this sounds like a pretty clear-cut case of murder and attempted murder. According to Toronto City News, Ken even pled guilty to fraud around the same time after falsely billing his employer over $30,000 to cover debts he had acquired through gambling. Urban explorers in both New York and New Orleans have strange and disturbing tales of alligators that they found right in the middle of human civilization. If you found an alligator in the street or a sewer drain, you'd be blown away, right? At least as long as you didn't live in Florida. We all know that Florida has alligators that invade people's homes all the time, but New Orleans has a haven for gators at the Six Flags Amusement Park that was ravaged by Hurricane Katrina back in 2005. And you could just wander into their lair without knowing better if you're not careful. Urban explorers like photographer Seth Lawless have documented the phenomenon, showing that in places that humans once used for recreation, alligators and other wild creatures now make their hunting grounds. As if that wasn't enough, Residents in New York City occasionally spot these vicious reptiles in their sewers, subway tunnels, or street gutters. But how do they get there? To be honest, it's mostly because of irresponsible pet owners. 
Some people buy baby alligators thinking they're cute, but after they grow to over three feet, the owners start to get nervous. Sometimes they just abandon the alligator in the street, dropping them down open manhole covers or into storm drains. Those alligators could just chomp your leg off if you walk down the wrong dark alley, so be careful no matter where you go. Dangers lurk behind many corners in cities all over, and you don't want to become alligator chow. Number 10. Strange Bat Hybrid Creature During England's first coronavirus lockdown last year, a group of six friends from Urban Explorers UK claimed they discovered a bizarre half-bat, half-human creature last year on a beach in the Salt Dean area of Sussex. Jay Jones, one of the group's founding members, said that they just happened to stumble upon the strange foot-long specimen while looking around the area for interesting or strange creatures or relics. This group actively looks out for the stuff you or I might try to avoid, and occasionally they find things that science can't quite explain. I've never seen anything like it, the bewildered man told reporters. Horrifying pictures that Jones shared online showed a dead gray creature with what appeared to be inch-long fangs. The images were so disturbing that Metro staff members decided not to share them when the news outlet covered the story. Little else is known about what the animal actually was or whether authorities took the discovery seriously. Number 9. Discovery Island There's a small 11.5-acre island in Bay Lake, Florida that was once home to Disney's Discovery Island, where visitors observed rare birds and other wild animals between 1974 and 1999. After operating for 25 years, Discovery Island shuttered its doors for unknown reasons, although poor attendance and high maintenance costs were likely the cause, and they relocated their animals to Disney's Animal Kingdom. Since then, the former park has sat abandoned, drawing the curiosity of urban explorers like Shane Perez, a blogger who swam through the alligator-infested waters to reach Discovery Island with some friends and trespassed onto the site in 2009, over a decade after its closure. We were literally surrounded by what sounded like thousands of birds, he said of his first observations on the island. They found that the lights actually still worked, and then they encountered several angry vultures as well as the haunting remnants of the park that was left behind among the overgrown wildlife, including photos of employees scattered inside deserted buildings, preserved snakes inside of jars, and of course, and of course, a lot of garbage, including an empty Coke bottle. Not all of Discovery Island's unwelcome visitors found it as eerie as Perez and his pals. When authorities discovered a man camping on Discovery Island last year and ordered him to leave, he referred to the park as a tropical paradise and said he didn't know that he wasn't allowed to be there. Sounds like a typical Florida man story to me. Number 8. Cremated Human Remains Michigan's Department of Licensing and Regulatory Affairs was quick to suspend a Flint Funeral Home's operating license in 2017 after investigators discovered numerous violations, including decomposing corpses, unsanitary preparation rooms, blood-stained casket pillows, and maggots. After the state closed Swanson Funeral Home, owner O'Neill Swanson II appeared to have simply left it as is, as one urban explorer discovered when they became brave enough to enter the abandoned building. Inside, the anonymous individual reportedly found bottles of chemicals, dirty embalming instruments, and a plastic bag of what looked to be cremated human remains. The media obtained and published disturbing images of the explorer's gruesome discoveries, adding to the growing list of complaints against the shuttered business. In addition to the filthy conditions found at the funeral home, Swanson was accused of selling prepaid funeral contracts without a proper license. He pled no contest to two felony counts of failing to escrow the prepaid funds and using some of the money for personal expenses. A judge ordered him to pay $75,000 in restitution. Number 7. Deserted Mansion While driving in the outskirts of North London one day last year, urban explorer Colin Smith spotted a spooky mansion set back behind a long, overgrown driveway. Curious to see what was inside, he returned a few days later to look around. It was quite creepy because it was so dark and the house was so big, he later told reporters. Inside the eight-bedroom home, which dates back to the 1930s, and has a servant quarters and bell system for summoning staff, Smith found a grand piano, furniture, old bottles of wine, a pair of glasses, painted portraits, silver cutlery, books, black and white photographs, and newspapers dating as far back as 1954. Video footage also shows dishes, cleaning supplies, and a clock on the wall that stopped a few minutes past 6.30. Smith determined that the house had been abandoned for around 30 years, based on sell-by dates on old cans of food in the kitchen which also contained a fridge full of moldy food. 
It's unknown why the property owners deserted the once lavish home without taking all of their things, leaving behind an eerie time capsule containing the scattered remnants of the time they spent there. When asked by the media what he thought, Smith speculated, if I had to guess, I would say that the house was perhaps sold to a property tycoon who simply didn't have the time or resources to renovate it. Number 6. Hanging Bones After reportedly living in isolation for decades, a Norfolk, England farmer named Tony Martin was convicted of murder in 1999 for shooting and killing a teenage burglar who invaded his home. His charges were eventually reduced to manslaughter and in 2003, Martin was released from prison. Wanting to evade unwanted attention and publicity, the senior citizen moved to a secret address instead of returning to his former residence. Curious to see what was inside but allegedly unaware that the home was an infamous crime scene, YouTuber Abandoned World Explorer UK spotted the house while on vacation in 2018 and decided to go in and film the experience. Covered in overgrowth, it contained animal bones on the bathroom floor and some hanging on a string from the ceiling. There was also a classic MK1 Range Rover in one of the outbuildings and rusted farm equipment strewn throughout the property. The bones around the place made the house seem like it was something out of Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the explorer said, adding, I don't think I'll be going back. I felt so intimidated and scared whilst we were there. Nobody knows how or why the bones ended up inside Martin's home or who put them there. Number 5. Memorial Mound Mausoleum Gravedigger Clyde Booth had a dream of providing the public with a unique alternative to traditional burials. He turned his vision into reality in 1992 when he established Memorial Mound, an underground mausoleum that sat eight feet below the ground in Bessemer, Alabama. The facility's visitors area contained a chapel, a computer people could use to view pictures and videos of their lost loved ones, and a marble wall where people could leave items in memory of the deceased. There was also a room dedicated to selling caskets. Behind the wall was a warehouse-like room containing metal racks for holding caskets, which was not open to the public. Coffins were stacked up 10 feet high, with the lower placements coming with a more expensive price tag. Not many of these empty slots were really ever filled, and Booth's idea wasn't as popular as he thought it would be. With less than a dozen burials in four years and facing financial ruin, he ultimately decided to close Memorial Mound in 1996. Relatives were able to continue visiting the mausoleum for the next few years, but the building was permanently closed in 2000. Vandals looted the site for scrap metal, leaving it in disarray, and urban explorers eventually broke in out of sheer curiosity. Pictures of the dilapidated interior surfaced in 2014, showing broken glass, embalming supplies, display caskets that were left untouched by intruders, and decaying and skeletal human remains, including at least one person left in an open casket. The sickening images finally prompted authorities to act, despite having known of the building's neglected state for some time. They removed the remains of seven individuals and took them to the coroner's office so that their surviving family members could make long overdue final arrangements. Sadly, by then, some of the graves had been ransacked, with at least one human skull having apparently been taken as a depraved memento of someone's trespassing adventure. Number 4. Pickled Shark When the Wildlife Wonderland Park in Victoria, Australia closed down in 2012 due to animal welfare and licensing concerns, it left behind a gory attraction that would ultimately draw urban explorers in droves. A preserved 13-foot-long great white shark sitting in a tank of formaldehyde. Nicknamed Rosie, the shark died in 1998 off the South Australian coast after getting caught in a tuna fishing net. Wildlife Wonderland bought the specimen, paying about $500,000 after all the costs associated with preserving her and transporting her to the property were added up. And that's when the corpse was put on display in a custom-built tank. Despite the hefty investment, the owner of Wildlife Wonderland abandoned Rosie at the site when the park shut down. Over the years, the liquid inside the tank became murky and green. And the damage became worse when images and footage of Rosie appeared online in 2018 and attracted intruders who covered the enclosure in graffiti, pried the top off, and littered it with trash, including a broken television. Authorities tried their best to deter urban explorers from trespassing into the decrepit park, citing dangerous formaldehyde vapors that were escaping from the broken tank and posing a public health hazard. The property's owners also became fed up with unwanted visitors and decided that the best way to curb the problem was to get rid of Rosie. They sold the dead shark to a business called Crystal World at the urging of one of its employees, who read Rosie's story on Facebook. With the help of a shark and taxidermy expert, owner Tom Capitani directed an extensive restoration effort. 
It's now safe and permitted for the public to see Rosie, who's on display at Crystal World Exhibition Center near Melbourne. Have you ever encountered a taxidermied animal? What was it? Were you weirded out by it at all? Tell me about your strange experience in the comments section below. And then remember to subscribe to Worldlist if you haven't already for more intense videos just like this one. Number 3. A Dead Body While looking around the deserted former home of late wrestling star Jackie Palo last year in Manston, England, urban explorer and photographer Paul Jones snapped photos of the grand piano and other items left among the crumbling ruins. But as he later explained to the press, he immediately knew that something wasn't right. When I was walking around, I saw a door which was shut with some ropes across it, and when I tried to push it open, I could see there was a mattress up against it on the other side," Paolo recounted. I just knew there was a body in there. I was almost expecting it. I managed to push the door open as far as I could, and I saw the poor old chap. The shocked explorer speculated that perhaps the individual was homeless, and it pushed the mattress against the door to prevent people from entering the room, and then died while he was in there. Based on when Paolo's friend had last been at the property, he estimated that the body had been there for several weeks. As disturbing as the discovery is, it's also rather heartbreaking, as Paolo pointed out, stating, This is someone's son. He may have family. He's a human being, and to die this way is really upsetting. Police did not find any signs of foul play and therefore did not consider the tragic death suspicious. Number 2. Lake Shawnee Amusement Park This disturbing place is totally creepy and probably haunted to boot. Located in Princeton, West Virginia, the Lake Shawnee Amusement Park operated for 40 years, from 1926 to 1966. It was popular among locals from coal mining families and boasted a Ferris wheel swing ride, concession stands, dance hall, racetrack, and overnight cabins. However, while it was in business, six people died at the park. One girl lost her life in the early 1950s when a delivery truck backed into the swing ride while she was on it. Then a nine-year-old boy drowned in the swimming pool when his arm was sucked into the drain after his mother left him unattended. The pool was subsequently filled in to prevent any more deaths. But the site's connection with death dates back much farther. During the mid-18th century, a massacre occurred on the property amid a land dispute between two families. The park was purchased and briefly reopened in the late 1980s, but was quickly shut down so archaeologists could excavate the site on the suspicion of a Native American burial ground being located there. The team uncovered the skeletal remains of 13 people, dating back to before European settlers arrived. Today, the property is a popular attraction for urban and paranormal explorers, who are eager to investigate rumors of the former park being haunted. Whether or not this is true, the decaying rides and fixtures that were never dismantled and removed are certainly a creepy sight. Number 1. A Chilling Message Social media users recently went into a panic when images showing the interior of an abandoned hut in Lincolnshire, England went viral. Urban explorer Dan Sharkey found the conspicuous concrete structure near the back of a property. He descended a ladder into the bunker and discovered an array of bizarre graffiti, including an angry stick figure, a picture of a man bleeding from his mouth, and a strange landscape of red and black trees. The room also contained two rusting bed frames and an old blanket. Above one of the beds is a disturbing message, scrawled in all capital letters crawl inside it will give you a hug, along with a black arrow pointing towards a hole in the bunker. The hole is really too small for a person, even a child, but was nevertheless creepy. Sharky's discovery sparked widespread interest from social media users all over the world. While many commenters focused on the structure's disturbing contents, others were more interested in when and why the bunker was built, with some speculating it was once used by the Royal Observation Corps. One person remarked that it's a shame how people vandalize and destroy abandoned places that could be maintained and used as attractions. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to learn more about fascinating discoveries made by urban explorers, then let me know in the comments below. And while you're at it, be sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time.